Okay, so now that we have our cart, which is displaying all of our items, we have the quantity that allows the user to update the quantity. The next step is to work on our cart summary section. All right, so that's all we're going to do here. So what I want you to do is to go to the cart page and navigate to the very bottom. And here we have our section for the cart summary. So go ahead and delete all this here, the dummy data. And we're going to start off with a H2 tag, which is going to display our cart summary. Save that and go back. All right. So now we have our cart summary. Our right, next thing I want to do is I want to add a little bit of room here. Um, I want to give it a little padding, do padding to the left. So we're going to do PL-4, save that and go back. All right, so you see there was a little shift there. All right, so that gives it more room. All right, next thing I want to do is um, I actually want to delete all this here because I feel like the console is kind of getting in the way and I want to be able to have more room to see these summaries. So go ahead and click the application tab at the bottom and just clear all the data. Refresh the page. And all we're going to do is have two items for the moment. So I'm going to just going to add the turkey burger and the veggie burger. Go back to the cart and now we just have two. All right here. All right, so now let's go ahead and continue. So the next thing I want to do here is I want to have a P tag, which is going to display the number of items. So in this case here, you see that we have two items. So ideally what I want is something to say two items. So here we're going to have our P tag. And we're going to have a condition here. And we're going to start off the condition by saying if the cart length is equal to 1, then we're going to say one item. Else, we're going to have backticks because I'm going to use some JavaScript. And we're going to say the cart length items. All right. Now, the reason why I'm doing this condition here is because this allows me to display the word item correctly, right? So if we have only one item, we're going to have item without the S in singular form. Whereas if we have more than one item, we have items, all right, which is in plural form. All right. So because it wouldn't make sense if, say, we have three items in the card and it says three item, right? So this right here solves that issue for us. All right, so now that we have this, uh, let's go ahead and save this and see what we got so far. All right, good. That's correct. So we got two items. All right, another thing, I want to add some styling to this. So go back, and for the P tag, we're going to give it a class name. And we're going to start off by doing font weight of light. I'm also going to do text muted. And I'm going to add a border, border to the bottom. So border, bottom. Save that. All right. Yeah, that's that looks good right there. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to now add the total. So the total of everything in the cart. So this is also going to occur inside a P tag. And this P tag, I'm going to give it a class name. And it's going to be font weight of bold all right so i want the the price uh the total to be in the font weight of bold and i want to start off by saying total and then the dollar sign and then here within these braces here we're going to add some logic here to essentially do our calculations on the um, the the total for the for all the card items in our cart and this is going to work by using a redu uh, in javascript we have a reduce function that allows us to do exactly that so i'm going to do cart dot reduce 
and reduce is going to take is going to take in two arguments. Um, the first one is going to be the accumulator or the what's going to keep the current sum of each item as we go through it. So, for example, so we're going to have to let's say as we're going looping around each item in the card, say it starts on this first row here. Well. In order to get the total for this item for the moment, we're going to have to calculate the total of this one. So say um, we're going to have to multiply the quantity the quantity multiplied by the price, right? So we're going to have to do 2 times 8, all right? And then that will give us the sum of this row right here. But then when we move on to the next row, this item here, well, we need to keep track of the sum from the previous row. So we're going to do the sum of this plus multiply uh, the quantity of this ti uh, times the price here. And then that would sum up as well. And, you know, each row we go, we have to keep track of the sum. So that's essentially what reduce helps us do, uh, helps us with. All right, so this is sort of, again, so going to the reduce the, is going to take two arguments. The first one I'm going to say, I'm going to call it current sum. And then the second one is going to be the current item, or I'm going to call it current cart item. And then now we start our, multiple, our, our calculations. So this is going to be current sum plus the current, the current item count multiplied by the current cart item price which is product price and then we're going to add a parenthesis or, or we're going to have to then after that let's see here we're going to do a comma for the second or for another argument here and it's going to be zero. And this is the initial value that we want to start off with when we start off the calculations. All right. There you go. All right. Good. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's see what we got so far. All right. So you see we have uh, two items. Let me actually bring the quantity down to one here. So 15 and 8, that will give us 23. And you see dynamically it changes over here. And so if I add two for the veggie burger over here, it updates and gives it 38 and give it a three. And then we have 53. All right. Obviously, we see that we're missing some decimal places here. We want to do uh, uh, have this in two decimal places. So the way we're going to do that is here at the at the closing um, curly brace or a curly tag. We're going to do two fixed and give it two to indicate two decimal places if we go back now we get the price in two decimal places here all right so 53 and decrement the value here you see one and now goes to 23 if we want to increment the quantity for turger burger this dynamically adjusts this as well all right good so next um the next thing i want to add Wait, yes. All right, yeah. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add a button here, which I want to, which is going to say proceed to checkout. Now there's a button I have in mind here, and that has to do with if we go to click view product, it's this button right here. The only thing we're going to change is instead of add to cart, we're going to say proceed to checkout. But I want the look to look just like this. And this is from the product component. So going here we're going to pull up our product component and that's this button here that says add to cart go ahead and copy this go back to the cart component and right after the p tag we're going to go ahead and paste that and for this button the only thing we need is the class name here so go ahead and delete the disabled attribute and the on click and we're also going to change this to say proceed to checkout. Go ahead and save that and go back and see what we get. Go to the cart and there you go. 
All right, now that that's exactly how I want it to look. All right, now you see that we have this. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and close up my console and add some items to the cart. Let's go ahead and add penne pasta, add to cart, uh, pasta parmesan, add to cart, and go to the cart. You see we have four items. All right, there you go. And let me see, we update the quantity and everything's updating here dynamically. And there you go, all right. The last thing I want to show you is just just to show you how it looks on different devices. So you see, this is at it. You know, these this is at a large. Uh, if we're using a large device, and I'm gonna shrink this page just so we can see how it looks on like mobile and tablet size. So you see it shrinking. All right. So this is probably like tablet size. All right. So now we're getting to the mobile size. And there you go. This is essentially like mobile size right here. There you go. And we added some boldness to the total, so that way it's very, you know, I think it makes it it makes it very clear to us. And um, and yeah, I'm very. This looks good. All right, so that looks good. All right, so that's it for now. So I guess the next thing I want to do is start working on the functionality for removing the items from the cart. All right, and then from there, we'll move on to, to the functionality for the proceeding to checkout. All right, so I'll see you in another lecture.